one of the key concerns is the Chinese government when it comes to the, our port control. You might have driven past the ports of Baltimore, Newark, Bayonne, L.A. in the past. You see all the big uh, shipping containers out there. It'll say Marisac or Costco or various different stuff. Well, Costco actually stands for the Chinese Ocean Shipping Company. Unlike most companies around here, if you own a shipping company, it's John you know, Vanderbilt that owns it and has a lot of money. This one's actually directly owned by the Chinese government and it's part of their larger mar maritime fleet. And over the last few years, the Chinese fleet has gotten bigger and there's some dangerous trends that have uh, come out. Just last August, on August 9th, uh, out of the port of Dalian in China, uh, an aircraft carrier uh, put to sea for the first time. Up until this point, the Chinese Navy had never had an aircraft carrier, never had much more than a brown water na navy or perhaps a green water navy, depending on your description. They have been actively planning to build a blue water navy, which makes sense for the Chinese government. The uh, Chinese government is the only member of the Security Council without a blue water navy and an aircraft carrier. <clears throat> Despite the Chinese claims that this is purely a defensive uh, position, it's purely for the use of uh, extending their influence in the region, we have reason to suspect them. First of all, this was never supposed to be an aircraft carrier. This was an old Russian carrier that was bought, Cold War scrap that was never finished during the end of the Cold War, and they bought it to turn into a, a floating casino. Uh, I don't know how many people buy military ships to become casinos, but I don't think it's probably the best uh, move. In fact, it took them several years to transport the, sh the ships. The Turkish government wouldn't let them take it to the Bosphorus Straits for so many years because their afraid thing was going to fall apart in, in the middle of the, of the canal. <coughs> if, you're, if you're a businessman and the Chinese government has become more and more businesslike for the last few years, why would you buy a, a rotting honking ship to, to turn into a casino? Once more, the port of Macau, which is uh, a large Chinese uh, resort area they're supposed to go to, the port cannot hold the ship. It never could. So there was questions by people in the intelligence community and the foreign affairs community since the beginning. Over the last two years, there's been a mass amount of wor works on it. There's been cranes been moving. It's been given a coat of the Chinese military pay and finally put to, put to sea. It is not fully o operational yet, which is good for... U.S. and other countries, but we have reason to worry the next 10 to 20 years that the U.S. dominance of the seas is going to come to an end. In order to put a carrier to sea, it's not like just one ship you can send off by itself. It needs to be a part of a full-fledged uh, fleet with amphibious warships that can conduct anti-submarine warfare, uh, subs, uh, car uh, carrier escorts, destroyers, frigates to comprise a whole, whole fleet, as well as pilots that are skilled on landing and taking off from a carrier deck. It's not like landing a plane at the Dallas airport. It's like landing on a post stamp, as pilots uh, told me. And the planes that the Chinese Navy has had up to this point do not support that. Well, just about a month before this happened, a photo leaked on the Internet of a long-rumored uh, development of a Chinese fighter called the J-20, which is analogous with the F-22 fighter that the U.S. government has been developing for the last 15 years. Except the only two differences with if it is that it's rumored to have stealth capabilities that are much more advanced in the U.S. and it can hold double the amount of ordnance than the U.S. With the U.S. Uh, deciding to cut back on the F-22 production, we could very well see the U.S. being outmanned and outgunned in the skies and our air support a superiority that we've relied on as part of our doctrine of defense for the last 50 years ev evaporate. Uh, from from what you've all seen in the news and read the reports in Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iraq uh, 10 years ago in the first Persian Gulf War, the reason the U.S. has been so successful is because of our air superiority, that they've blown the enemy out of the sky and off the, off the face of the earth before they can even approach. With the Libyan conflict, as you've seen in the last few months, with the rebels against Gaddafi forces, the main problem was is the lack of technology that they do not possess rockets, self-propelled uh, uh, artillery, and other devices to meet the uh, Gaddafi forces. And so they were waiting around uh, in uh, ditches and all, hoping that they would pull back the artillery before they could attack. And when they pulled the artillery out, they had to retreat unless UN and NATO uh, forces were in the skies to protect them. If we have to go into conflicts in the near future without protection of the skies that we're used to having total dominance. You can expect a uh, 
an event like Iraq where 10,000 troops have been killed to turn into a bloodbath where we're losing 150,000 troops, much worse than Vietnam. And this is a grave national security problem. Another thing we saw with the Scott Libya recently is the excellent use of the Predator drones. Well, uh, recently, the Chinese Navy has been conducting drills. They, they, they sent a fleet back in last July of 11 warships in between two Japanese islands to conduct uh, missile training, uh, artillery training, which showed that they are developing the ability to move as a fleet and conduct operations, which will be vital for a carrier battle group. Over the sky, the Japanese patrol uh, saw a little, a little uh, Predator drone, or the Japan Japanese version, which is another key component in a fleet that the Japanese have been developing. In, in, in addition to this, the Chinese have become much more, more aggressive. Last June, uh, India uh, was, uh, had its navy on a goodwill tour of the Middle East, uh, excuse me, the uh, Southeast Asia. The, uh, one of their ships, the uh, INS uh, uh, Ver Air, an uh, amphibious assault ship, put into port in uh, Thailand. And when, on its way back to India after less port, it was challenged in open waters and international waters by the Chinese Navy, claiming that they had control over all the sea in the area and that there was no international waters. This is a major development that we should be worried about. If the Chinese military and Navy starts claiming all the international waters for their own use, there could be a serious problem in the region in the future. Right now, it doesn't matter because they don't have the power and the ability to project it. But with the next 10 to 20 years, that ability might, might be there. And if there's problems in the Middle East, and we need to send troops in, or we need to send troops into Taiwan, and they are, and they are able to project out into the Mediterranean, they're able to project out into the China Sea, it'll be very difficult for U.S. forces to arrive in, arrive in the area. Up to now, we haven't had a problem. But over the last few years, the U.S. Navy has won from 15 carrier battle groups down to 11. There's talk of going down to 10 in the next two or three years, possibly nine by, the, by 2020. By that time, the, the Chinese Navy might have eight or nine carrier battle groups put to sea. If this is the case, the U.S. dominance of the seas that was started with Com Commodore John Barry, the father of the U.S. Navy, will, will shortly come, come to an end. Between the, the attacks on the uh, Thailand Navy and in Japan, they are two of the key regional powers that have carriers in the area. They are clearly developing a plan to see what, what they can do. The, the Chinese Navy has also been up, upgrading their conventional uh, forces. They have uh, now developed 10 nuclear power submarines and about 30 World War II area conventional submarines. This is the largest fleet in, in, in Asia. They also developed 20 brand new destroyer and, and carrier escort ships. Clearly, they are putting together a fleet to rival the U.S. Navy. What has the U.S. done during this, during this period of time? We have canceled uh, production of the F-22 uh, carrier. We have canceled production of aircraft carriers. We have went from a 1,000-ship Navy down to somewhere around 600 ships, and it will continue to shrink and shrink. The uh, U.S. government has decided, figured with a massive victories in the Middle East that clearly we are untouchable and we can't be stopped. This is slowly uh, deteriorating. Unless we wake up and fix the problem, this will be a ma major, major, major problem. <coughs>